four types of persons, Satan fears. I tell you, there are four kinds of persons that Satan hides from. I know you're surprised about this topic, but I tell you, yes, there are indeed four types of persons that the devil is always terrified when he sees them. And the first on my list is the humble. Yes, if you are humble, the devil runs very, very far from you. Because you know he's a proud person. The devil is so proud. As a matter of fact, it was his pride that descended him to this level. Yes, below the earth, it was his pride that kept him at that state. And is still keeping him at that level. A humble person submits to God. A humble person may fall, but then will be broken. A humble person is not a perfect person. But a humble person is that one that submits to God wholeheartedly. He or she may fall, like I said. But then he or she will still realize that God is a God that sees it in secret. And you will see that humble one go into prayer and fasting. You see that humble one pray from a broken and a contrite heart. You see that humble one bow down in worship to God. And the devil is not happy. Remember, he was trying to drag kingship with God. He was trying to measure shoulders with God. And what happened? He was casted down. So when he sees that you are humble, no wonder the Bible says that the Lord humbles the proud and give grace to the humble. I tell you, if you're a humble person, you keep growing from grace to grace. And the devil will run so far from you. As a matter of fact, he'll be terrified by me seeing you. He will not want to come close to you because you are that person that submits to God. You are that person that cries and feels remorse from a broken and a contrite heart. So if you are humble, I tell you, the devil will fear you. And he is, of course, terrified by you. Hallelujah. And the second I have on my list is those who pray. Hallelujah. Prayer brings about connection between you and God. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is communicating with God. Prayer is having faith in God. Now, this is a God whom you have not seen. This is a God whom you are yet to see. This is a God that, of course, physically, you're not seeing that he's close to you. But because of the faith we have in him, because of the belief we have in him, we talk to him as though he is with us. And of course, he's with us. I want you to understand this. Now, it's not like you're talking to me and I'm facing you. You're talking, you're confident in talking to me. You're not seeing God. He is far but close to us in faith. Because we believe that he's with us. And that is the connection. That is the perfect connection every Christian needs. Knowing that God is with us. He's in our hearts. He's around us. So if you pray all the time, if you pray without ceasing, ah, there is always a siege of fire around you. I saw an ex-witch lady gave a testimony. I saw it in a video. A repentant witch right now. You know? So, um, that there was a day she went on a midnight operation. And she was hunting for the souls of little children. So, while she was flying past, I don't know how they do these things. But while she was, you know, passing, that she saw a house. And, you know, because she's a witch, probably they have their foresights also. That she realized that there are kids in that, in that house. So she dropped by. So she stopped by and stepped into the house. When she entered into the room where these children lay, where they were lying, she said she tried. That how she does it is she calls out their spirits. You know? And she was trying to call out the spirit of these children. There was a, a resistance. Like she was trying to call, but a force was not allowing their soul come out of their body. That how she does it according to her. When she calls them out, she will take them to their meeting and get them initiated. So she was trying to call out the souls of these children. And it was like there was a resistance. There was a force. Not allowing the source of those children comforts. And then she started throwing arrows to the children. 
She said when she threw the arrow, the arrow bounced back. That when she threw the arrow, the arrow bounced back. You know? Then she tried to send another thing. I don't know. It's been a while I, I saw that video. She tried to send another thing and automatically there was a siege of fire around those children. And in that video, she was urging mothers to keep praying for their children. That prayers goes a very, very long way. That prayers brings about the siege of protection around your children, around yourself, around your vicinity. And of course, what happened? She fled. When she could not penetrate those children, she fled. And then the presenter asked her, what actually, there was something, you know, you were trying and trying. What actually made you run away? She said the last arrow she threw struck her on her chest. Like it was a bat to send her to her. And the thing hurt her so bad that she had to flee out of that house. And when I saw that video, ah, I said, God, anyone that does not know you is in trouble. Anyone that does not pray is in danger. As a child of God, if you make prayer a part of you, if you make a prayer a consistent thing in your life, the devil will be so scared of you. <laughs> At the mention of your name, oh, the devil will flee. You know why? Because you walk with God the Father, you walk with God the Son, you walk with God the Holy Spirit, you are in a strong bond with them. You have a strong connection with them. You communicate with them every day. The Lord reveals things to you. There's always a tete a tete father and daughter or father and son, you know, um, discussion between you and God in the place of prayers. So how can the devil come close to you when there's an entourage following you? When you walk with the host of angels, the devil cannot come close to you. If you are a praying Christian, you are a powerful Christian. If you are a praying Christian, you are untouchable, unkillable. And above all, you shall triumph in all ramifications of your life. Hallelujah. And the top people that the devil hides from because he's scared of them are those that are obedient to God. You and I know that the devil is a rebel. You and I know that the devil is a very stubborn creature. You and I know that he is so disobedient, he lacks respect for God. So if you're obedient to God, the devil runs very far from you. And that is because we follow the footsteps of Jesus. Where he goes, we go. How he speaks, we speak. The things he wants us to do, we do. When we talk, we talk like Jesus. When we act, we act like Jesus. We always want to live a Christ-like life. And living a godly life, a Christ-like life, is living in obedience to God's word. Not finding yourself in the midst of ungodly people. Praying without ceasing, fellowshipping with the brethren, keeping away from ungodly friends, studying God's word, guiding your heart, staying away from negative books, staying away from pornography, just generally being happy by doing the things of God, loving God, obeying him totally, giving him your all. You think the devil that is a rebel will be happy about that? Someone that disobeyed God, that, that is trying to rub shoulders with God. When he sees that you are obedient to God, walking according to God's word, living a Christ-like life, the devil will fear you. He will be so terrified. He will not come close to you. When he hears your name, he will say, no, 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 please, please don't, 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 oh, don't call that name here. I am telling you, because an obedient child of God is a protected child of God. An obedient child of God is hidden under the rock that is higher than him. And who is that rock? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. An obedient child of God is also untouchable, unkillable, and undefeatable. And above all, the devil fears an obedient child of God. Hallelujah. And the last and the very, very most important of them all is the devil fears those that are filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is stop notch. When the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, when you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our friend as children of God. The Holy Spirit ought to be your friend 
you under the sound of my voice. You are supposed to be walking according to the leading and the direction of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit empowers us Christians to resist temptation. And that's why I said it is top notch. If you walk according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit resides deep inside of you, there is no temptation that you will not conquer. There is no trial that you will not scale through. Because the Holy Spirit all by himself will lift you up through the storm. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are protected from darkness and all forms of oppressions of the devil. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a person. Yes, he's a spirit, but he's a person. If you make him your friend, just like you can hear me, you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, loud and clear. You will not make mistakes in life. Oh, I don't know how to, how to explain this to you. You will be at the right place at the right time. When it is the wrong place, the Holy Spirit all by himself will take you out of that place. And that's why you see situations where people will tell you, Oh, I was just here right now. I said, let me just get this and this situation happened. It is the Holy Spirit. Oh, Rabados, Kalahante, Anana. I wish you can understand this. Make the Holy Spirit your friend. The devil will run far from you. The devil will fear you. Even as a human, the devil will fear you. He will not come near your dwelling. He will not come close to you. He will never take you on away. Because the Holy Spirit will be leading you all through your life. All through the days of your life. The Holy Spirit will be leading you. All you have to do is partner with the third person in the Holy Trinity. The person of the Holy Spirit. He is ever ready to hold hands with you. All you have to do is ask God for mercy. Whichever way you have erred. If you don't fall in these four categories, the devil will keep toiling with your life. Be humble as the devil is a proud person. He will run far from you. Pray without ceasing to be connected and meted with God. Be obedient to God's word by walking in the direction of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. By doing and acting exactly just like Christ. And above all, partner with the Holy Spirit. Partner with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Open up your heart and say, sweet Holy Spirit, fill me up. Fill up that vacuum. I want to be transformed by the renewal of my mind. You cannot be transformed except your mind is renewed by the Holy Spirit. I tell you, you need the Holy Spirit. I need him more than I have him now. I need him to fill me up until I begin to run over. Because when the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, the devil cannot come close. God bless you all so much. Before I say goodbye, I want you to see this video. I know you have been seeing it, but see it again. Wow. And we started a day with the Lord. This is I and my team driving into the glory of God, into the Port Harcourt, teaching hospital to discharge those that are now better to the glory of God. God and to the shame of the devil. Now meet Sister Beauty in the building. Sister Peace. Wow. They are so beautiful. Sister Victoria, Sister Susan, and yours truly, Sister Noye AZ. Um, this is her first patient. She gave birth through um, the cesarean section, um, but her baby has got little complication. She says she has been praying fervently for this day, and today the Lord has answered her. This is Sister Victoria praying for her, leading her to Christ, as we also discharged her and her baby divinely. It was an emotional moment. I was just holding my tears. Wow, so touching. Um, she said, God bless all of you, you all that has sold into this outreach. Meet our second patient. She also gave birth through cesarean section. We actually wanted to discharge her divinely, but we realized she needed some medicine. So we gave her money for that. And this is our third patient. She was molested. As you can see, she's a little girl. 
so emotional. We cried with her. We encouraged her. That joy comet in the morning. Her baby is so beautiful. Um, a cutie. All is well. Thank you all so much for doing this together with me. Our third patient, we prayed and did the needful. Our fourth patient, wow, a very pathetic story. He was electrocuted um, in his place of work. To the glory of God, he is still alive. We actually stepped into this place, to into his room to um discharge him but we realize he is critically down we had to administer prayers the word of god and we decreed and declared that by the stripes of jesus he is made whole hopefully we'll be coming back to know and to check if he has been divinely discharged we gave him a token for food as he is an orphan and we also paid for his medication as the lord will you know heal him divinely by his grace in the name of jesus and this is the matron she has been so patient and hard working and the lord bless everyone in this hospital this is me talking to his friend to stand with him through thick and thin the lord has been so faithful wow thank you mommy peace sister peace thank you sister susan thank you sister victoria thank you um sister beauty we are more than this but we have to um we definitely had to come in this number because it's a hospital we don't have to be crowded as you can see we had beautiful pictures just to show you all my patrons you are indeed a blessing to this ministry god bless you as you can see your fingerprints have been crested in the lives of this one and hopefully we'll be discharging more next time god bless you all i love you welcome back if the lord has laid in your hearts to partner with us we are about to embark on our next divine discharge outreach we're going to the hospitals to of course save souls and discharge them pay their bills as the lord has instructed us please kindly click on the link in the comment section become a partner so that your fingerprints can be crested in the lives of those who need your help, my help in the hospital. And if you also want to reach me privately, this is my WhatsApp number. Chat me up. Drop your quota. Nothing is too small. I tell you nothing. Absolutely nothing is too small to touch lives in the hospital. God bless you all. I'm your sister and friend, Noye Eze. Talking to you all from Potakot, Nigeria. Be these four persons. And you will see the devil run and flee away from you. See you in my next video. If you're yet to subscribe, kindly click on the subscribe button. And of course, the thumbs up. To enable this video, reach out to a larger amount of persons here on YouTube. Again, be intentional about copying the link and sharing to family and friends. So that the devil, we be far from them. God bless you all. Bye for now.